What's going on, good people? It's David Johns, and I'm back with another installment of Three Things. There's a lot that we can talk about, but I want to begin this week's installment with the gross displays of anti-Blackness at the Olympic trials, really the Olympics more generally, and specifically the policing of Black women's bodies. As most of us know, Shakari Richardson will not be competing in the Olympics after failing a drug test. We'll come back to her homophobic tweet about Lil Nas X another time. Uh, there's been lots of public outcry about the decisions here, Shakari's, as well as those of the officials, uh, in particular around the rules of marijuana use in the Olympics. Uh, Dick Pound said that the minimum sanction should be something like a warning uh, so that athletes are not losing any period of eligibility and also said, frankly, I don't think that there's evidence of it being performance enhancing, quote, end quote. Uh, U.S. track and field responded saying that while they fully agree that the rules related to THC should be reevaluated, it would be detrimental to the integrity of the Olympic team trials for track and field if they were to amend their policies following competition only a few weeks before the Olympic Games. We shall see and all of us know that great things will continue to come from Shikari. Uh, in similar anti-Black news, swim caps desire for natural Black hair are not being allowed at the Tokyo Olympics. Hashtag Crown Act, hashtag Equality Act. The International Swimming Federation said that swim caps don't fit the natural shape of the head and to the best of their knowledge, the athletes competing at international events never use or never require caps of such size or configuration. Read, white folks' heads don't need these and since we are used to white folks competing in this sport. We don't really see the issue. Uh, founding member of the Black Swimming Association, Daniel Obi, said that, of course, original swim caps don't fit for natural black hair, which we all know. I swam in high school. I could not wear the regulation uh, Speedos. I wore 70 zipper pockets because all things ain't equal. Uh, the ruling is now being reconsidered, and we shall see what will happen in a few months in Tokyo. Uh, but we already know that there's a lack of diversity in the sport of swimming or water or aquatic sports more generally. And this will only further exclude members of the Black communities. Way to go, guys. Finally, Christine Mbomba uh, and Patrice Masalingi, both cisgendered women, have been banned from running in the 400-meter dash because of naturally high testosterone levels. Other runners who have been affected by this rule include Caster Semenyana, Francine, Niyasan Naba and Margaret Wambuyi. I apologize if I have mispronounced any of these names and welcome people helping to teach this baby. Mboya and Masalingi will both compete in the 100 and 200 meter events as the ban for high testosterone levels doesn't apply to these events. Talk about lack of equity. All of this to say that there's much more to be done on the world's global stage. Second, BB Moore Campbell Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to encourage awareness and action. And in particular, I want to highlight the Counseling Not Criminalization in Schools Act. Counseling Not Criminalization in Schools Act is a bill that has been introduced by Representative Ayanna Presley and Senator Chris Murphy. It's designed to shift resources away from police and schools and SRSOs toward culturally responsive nurses, medical health professionals, and trauma-informed staff that are designed to help ensure that all of our babies thrive. I'm thankful for an invitation from Mental Health America to participate in an IG Live conversation earlier this week and encourage you to find the video on their IG Live page. The third thing on my list, our good sis, friend Ashley Marie Preston, has a brilliant essay with stunning photos in Harper's Bazaar called Thriving as a Trans Woman Took Me Years. Here's what I learned along the way. Ashley says, the idea of static survival isn't liberating, it's limiting. Thriving, however, is at the very core of trans identity, despite any and all resistance to our desire to leave dignified lives. She also highlights the need for us to celebrate the wins of members of the trans community, as too often we celebrate trauma and tragedy, especially as a community continues to push against things like anti-trans legislation. So much work to be done there. And one quote that I love is that Ashley says, when black trans women are liberated, all of us will be. When we thrive, when Black trans women thrive, so does the community and our identity and our experiences intersect with. 
She includes in her article five tenets of thriving, which have shaped her personal evolution. And I encourage you to check them out, to ruminate on them, to journal with them, to spend time with them, and also get into how fabulous she looks in all of those photos. Uh, that's this week's three things. I hope that you found something new and something enjoyable that you tune in next week to. See you soon.